Hi, my name is Brian Hayes, and I want to present my project on combating relay fading and wireless communications. Now first, I want to talk about the problem under study, which, as stated before, is relay fading. This is a common problem in wireless communications, and we typically see it in urban environments. Um, we see it in urban environments because there's not a direct line of sight between transmitter and receiver. So this creates the fading effect that, that we refer to as Rayleigh fading. It is re related to Ricean fading, and that Rayleigh fading is somewhat of a subset of Ricean fading. Ricean fading is this natural fading that occurs when there is a direct line of sight between transmitter and receiver. And it's also, they're both modeled using a Gaussian random variable. Now, as you can see at the bottom here, there's a formula. And this formula describes a Rayleigh envelope. So, what this tells us is the probability of small r being in small r being within the envelope of large r is equal to this formula that we see here. And as we can see, the random variable sigma, which is a Gaussian random variable, is in this equation. So moving on, there's two existing approaches that I looked into. The first one is diversity, and really what I, what I focused on was a primitive version of diversity. And then the second, which I found interesting, is this multi-stage mitigation, where there's multiple types of mitigation to solve one problem. And I found it interesting, so I thought I would put a little focus on that. Now, the first existing approach I'd like to talk about is diversity. Basically, what happens in diversity is there's multiple signals. And there, there's two types of diversity that I, that I read about, and that's frequency and time diversity. So frequency diversity is there's multiple signals sent at different frequencies. So on the other end, you'll have a type, the type of antenna that can pick up these different frequencies. So you'd have, basically it would be multiple antennas that feed to the same place. And then there's time diversity, which would send different signals on the same frequency, but at different times. Now, the diversity that I'm talking about here is a primitive version of the diversity, the original and the most simple version. And basically, it gets all these signals in, and it picks the best signal, the one with the strongest signal-to-noise ratio. And that, that becomes the signal that's used. Now, the next approach that I'd like to talk about is, this, as I call it, the multi-stage approach. Now, the first stage is what's called a polyphase filter, and this is used to create a beam. And it creates a beam of higher gain from the transmitter to the receiver. But in increasing this gain, they also increase intersymbol interference. So basically, as we know from class, what happens is the, the signal it's the signal interferes with itself. Because you have strong lobes and they'll you'll have cross talk, you know, crosstalk in these lobes. So it'll interfere with itself. But then the second stage is this equalizer filter that filters the known interference that we created, the intersymbol interference we created from the received signal. So the, in, the intersymbol interference, the first stage eliminates the fading but creates new interference, and the second stage filters out this known interference that we created. Um, so now we're going to do a simple evaluation of each of these approaches. Diversity, uh, one pro is it's, it's efficient and it's simple. So low cost, low design, and it, I mean, it, it's been shown to work. 
the cons is it's only as good as its best signal. And again, I'm talking about the simplest version of diversity. So if all the signals are messed up, then we have a messed up signal because we can't extract a good signal if there is no good signal. And due to this, you may still require processing, which could in increase the problem size or design. Now this multi-stage pro is it, it is efficient. It's very efficient, and it and it certainly filters the Rayleigh fading out, rather than sending multiple signals where hopefully one of them isn't affected as badly as the others. Some cons though is it's complicated and expensive. It's a this is clearly a design intensive approach since you have to design multiple filters and it does introduce new interference which we have no way of knowing if all this new interference can be filtered out properly so now I'm gonna talk about my project approach so I took I took a fairly simple approach to add more power to the signal, or in other words, increase the signal to noise ratio. And so what I did was I created the signal and I tested for accuracy using bit error ratio to make sure the signal was consistently correct. And then I added Rayleigh fading to my signal and again checked to make sure my bit error ratio was consistently high at this point. And then I performed my mitigation methods and again measured my results to see that bit error ratio was significantly reduced which in my results it was so now we're gonna move over to MATLAB we're gonna talk about my my programs so mm, not the right folder we go now the first one is going to be signal out this creates my signal and I graph it as well and then without any interference here's my signal that gets received and again it's graphed we can look at the graphs but that's hard to tell but you, they're the same and you see I get this received message and now I can check BER which this will tell me the BER is zero which it should be because I haven't introduced any interference at all yet now what I can do is add the Rayleigh fading now I use I used the same relay feeding we used from homework but modified it to inject itself into my signal that I'm using and now I can redo the receiving signal to show um, again this graph it's visualization so I mean we can look and see that they're different it's obvious that they're different now and also, you can see that my receive message is nothing like what it was before. But to really tell, measure quantitatively the bit error ratio 0.4, which is really bad. Almost, almost half of the, all the bits are, are wrong. So this shows that the relay fading indeed affected my signal. So now I do the signal out again. So this makes a new signal. It's the same. It's the same message here. Um, and now I'm gonna do my power power increase. So this increases my SNR. And then I'm gonna put the Rayleigh fading in. And then this next one is actually used to step the power back 
down. So when I receive the signal, it can read the, the signal. So this would be like, like a filter, um, a step down filter on the receiver. And now when I hit signal in, again, we see this graph, which doesn't tell them, but you can see that my received signal is the same as it was before. If we type in BR, my BR is now zero. Um, I amplified the power by three times, so this is a significant increase. So it really should overcome the relay fading, which it does, and it does consistently. So I repeated this process over and over again and always gotten zero. So that's my my project. So now we come to the conclusion. Each technique in this world has different strengths and weaknesses, and I didn't talk about my project strengths and strengths and weaknesses, but the weakness is definitely that it requires more power, and that's costly. But the strength is, is it was consistently right. Um, so many techniques have been tried over the years of developing wireless communications for the many years that we have been developing wireless communications. And I really feel that the best techniques, dependent on situations, because each situation can be different, but that I believe the best techniques are likely to have happened by now. In other words, I think we've probably reached a point of diminishing returns on this problem, and we should probably be moving on to new, different problems. Um, that that summarizes my project. Thank you.